What up, everybody? We're back with another another episode of It's a Kickback. This week, I'm kicking it with Anthony Obas. Obas, what's up, my brother? What up? Good vibes. Yo, it's Obas in the building. New York is in the building. Word. We here. We live. Shout out to Quincy. Shout out to St. Luke. Shout out to all the spots in, down there, man. Uh, it's, good to, it's good to be on here. What's pop with you, James? Shit, bro. You see me working and trying to figure it out day at a time, man. Thank you for sitting down with me. You know, for the people who aren't familiar, though, who is Anthony Obas? I know who he is, but, you know, share with the people. Yeah, man. I'm like a crazy dude that <laughs> proud of all was dead. And literally, I'm crazy. Um, creative entrepreneur. Um, I guess, uh, I, I don't know, artist consultant, artist manager, yeah. a curator, a future A&R, brand developer. Um, mm. I'm a writer, I'm an author. Yeah, we got that. You see, you, I'm a writer. I got 10 rings of accomplishments and I'm still fucking broke as shit. But, you know, we you see the fuck. Like, I was making content earlier for you, bro. I, bro, I appreciate it. Bro, <laughs> so crazy, bro. I came from, I worked out early this morning. And some one of my homies from the block was like, "Yo, you still haven't given me the book." I said, "Damn!" I, <laughs> and I did forgot to text him. He said, hey, "Text me at four o'clock. I'll purchase the book." And I forgot to text him. I was just so I was babysitting today, so I was just like, "Hey, I feel it." You yeah. caught up rested because we are on the go, mother motherfucker. So I feel it. We always on the go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll give you a tip though. Just put that shit in your alarm. That's what I do. I just put it in yeah. my alarm. <laughs> I'm going to have a reminder, and it just goes a little bit of it, a little bop it up, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, with all those hats, would you, are you able to, like, kind of break it down to what your definite role is or your position in the music industry? Yeah, I definitely think it's more artist development. Artist developer, where I first, first brand, like brand developers. My goal is simply is to work with an artist and work with a brand and, like, go from, like, the ideation part to the, from the product and final service, right? Yeah. Uh, and it, they sometimes they might already have the product or service, but my job is to improve it. So I look at like financial statements, uh, marketing strategies, different type of social media type of outlets. Uh, I, I be PR, right? I do a lot yeah. of campaigns. I always reach it out to people when I don't feel like talking to people. <laughs> uh, you know, like I'm very extroverted, you know, but I want to be introverted sometimes. Um, and I'm also the connector, right? Like I put two and two together when it makes sense. You know what I mean? So like, you know, me to you was a two and two, like, okay, boom, boom, boom. And you know, X, Y, and Z. And like, you, you came up big, James. I know it's about you, but and it's about me. I don't know, but it's all about like, you came up big this year. You know what I mean? Like, I appreciate that. So, bro. You know? So, I mean, shit, you know, I talk a lot of shit about you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but we up. You know, like, God, we, uh, I swear, I swear on God, we got to so, keep getting after it. So, uh, for those who don't know, for those listening right now, um, I met Anthony Obos on a discord. Um, this is back when I was doing my artist spotlights and he reached out and he sent me his artist, Nick Moody. From that point, me and Obos have traveled to LA to put on and curate events. Um, we traveled to Bama to curate and put on events. Twice. You know? Yeah, twice. And then, twice. um, he invited me out to Nick Moody's like release party. So I went out to New York for that. Like, and then, it's you know, dragon fruit. Hey, 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 I had to try it, man. I was geeked up. <laughs> um, but then like to wrap up the year, Nick Moody, um, Nikki and Christina and Obos came to, you know, our little piece of heaven, um, in the cornfields and Quincy Ooh. to uh, perform at spook fest where I had Kirk Cobain's headline. And so much love to you for just, you know, taking a risk with the dude you met on fucking Discord for real, because we've done a lot, and honestly, I feel like we're finishing up our foundation to keep growing. All right, man, because yeah. you've been a big asset as far because you're very charismatic compared to me. Like I'm, people always like think I'm angry. I'm not angry. I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> they be like James is bad right now. It's like no, I'm just like deep in thought, like trying to figure out how to how to make this shit like. But no, no, he mad. I'll be like, no, I'm I'm just locked in, bro. And, but <laughs> you, it's like when you're locked in, you're also able to like smile and laugh. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I can have a good time. But at the end of the day, it's like, hold on. We got some business to take it. Right, 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 right. But OK, so back to you. You you said you handle a lot with the PR and stuff like that, which 
I, I've witnessed firsthand. What are some of the things that you were able to accomplish in this past year? I mean, shit, man. It was a lot. I mean, it was a lot that happened this year. You know, I think one has to do with brand expansion. Like, yo, we fucked up LA badly, bro. <laughs> like, I'd be honest with you. Like, I mean, I talk about like, shout outs to Ridimaya and Unfinished Legacy and Samo. Like, they came out to New York, bro, did a pop up here. Like, to find out, like, they have their own freaking, like, festivals that they be running out of Milwaukee. Like, I put you on the game, bro. Like, so it was just, like, things started to brand expansion, right? So, like, that DIO weekend kind of lit a spark on me in L.A., you know what I mean? Came yeah. back, like, went through some stuff, and I was just like, yo, bro, I need to quit everything. I got to jump in this full time because anything my, you know, because I was teaching literally the beginning of the year. But like yeah. mentally, I wasn't like, I wasn't about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Once after that coming from that DIO LA joint, you know, again, it was some, but there was just a lot of ups. Like, you know, like we brought so many people from different states to LA. Like the sun yeah. was beaming. Like with the energy was different. Then we ran it back. And I've never been to Alabama, but I, you know, to find out that Alabama could be the new spot. You knew I was told we talking about it. Yeah, but <laughs> we tapped in, we tapped it way before all these other people are now trying to run it up out there. You know what I mean? So yeah. I mean that you know, being able to travel and having brand expansion, I think it's one. Second thing was I'm a I'm able to now the degree of separation between me and I guess major players in the industry has shrunk. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I mean like I've known holding the friends since like 20, 2017, like their whole team from like shout outs to Madonna, Matt. Like the whole Madonna family to like his yeah. managers, like and to be at like Sony Hall, bro, like yeah, there is 150 people. My DJ, I literally went out to. I said, "Yo, but going out to London for six months, the energy's gonna come back. We're gonna come back different. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've been five years strong. Like only, you know, we we both broke like five figures as a company. Like you know, as like he did his separate entity. I helped him throw some alleys at him, but yeah." I, five figures this year as well too you know congratulations because um, it was tough man and this i haven't even like tapped into like my business credit you know what i mean like yeah. this is all just like boom 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 like basically do it now next year i'm gonna really open up the business credit for some real like assets you know what i mean like yeah like, i mean you got a whole freaking stage you know? <laughs> like and i took the space down my own stage in new york city but what yeah crazy bro um, literally have a friend up in, um, Nyack, New York. He was like, do you know somebody with a stage? And I'm like, he's all the way in like, you know, Illinois. He's like, damn it. I need that now. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, this is the culture of New York where we have no land, but we have a bunch of water. So it's just like, whatever. Yeah. Um, but like I said, brand expansion, I think was one. I definitely think degree of separation. Like I'm in the, I'm in the rooms to make money now. And it's not like these people Word. are out of reach. You know what I mean? Like, yeah easily meet up these people and be like, yo, what's up? And these people are down the fucking earth. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Kobe is a down to earth person. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I went to, I was with LaRusso out in DC for about a couple days. Down to earth motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, down to earth people. So it's like the degree of separation now. And like, I was with Rome Streets, right? Um, Because my bird. Yeah, bro. Oh, like, man, I don't know, talk to me. Yeah, bro. So my friend, shout out to Prolific Kid. But Prolific Kid is his main videographer. Word. With Rome Streets to shoot like it's content in London, Spain, back here. So he had a private list. He had a private party here in the city. And um, I was invited. Like, I had the first one invite because that's my guy. Prolific. Like, I mean, I, he was in Syracuse, right? Um, and I pull up there. You got Static Select there. You have like, oh, bro, it was wild, bro. China Streets was there. Bro, it was and I'm saying is, bro, like, that's why I'm like, I'm hyped that this year is the year because I'm in the room where I'm supposed to be at. You know what? Yeah, yeah. I quit my job because I'm like, yo, I need to be like, you need to be in the room with these people, right? And yeah. also, in addition to that, like, I mean, you see what I do now. I MC mostly, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I went on floor for MC. I'm like, I went to Texas. I, you know, I went to ATL. I went to New Orleans. MCing, like, a fucking... Harry Potter theme, fucking, you know, but, but like people were lit, like people gave me tips, like I was chilling. I got made still, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, so, you know, this year has just been marvelous, man. And 
this next 2023 is going to be a very interesting year, you know? Yeah. Man, congratulations. You've been, A, respect. Man, yeah, bro, uh, I just, I don't be, t- I'm not, you know me, we're not a top part, we're not a top type of people, you know? Yeah. So, like, these type of things, like, are keep under the books. I, you know, I take my pictures, but people don't really understand, like, what those pictures mean these days. Like, back, it's, back. You know, pictures as you get older, you know? So, Facts. So, all right. So you're talking about now that you're in the room, have what's your approach? Like walk, walk a newbie through it. Like, um, you know, you weren't in the rooms. Now you're invited in the rooms. What's your approach? I mean, to be honest with you, like these days, like I feel as though I belong it. You know, where is it? There's a, there's a difference now because I have worked so hard to build up where I need to be that I don't need to flex. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Thing was when I went to one of these events, and like my my ex girlfriend, she works at Billboard, um, but she couldn't even get into the event, right? And I don't work at Billboard, I don't work at Genius, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'm Anthony Wilbox, but I'm I'm coming in at Anthony Olbox. <laughs> it's, it's a difference, like no shit. Hey. You know, like, hey. you know, like, <laughs> but no, no hey, but like you could have been, you know, you could have been with the winning team, but you was not like. <laughs> You needed something. You needed a brand, which I respect, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't need to be someone I'm not. I could just be Anthony Obas and still have the same opportunities Word. in the room. So it's like my name holds weight now. It might not hold weight in terms of clout, right? I'm not the flashiest dude. I'm not trying to play. Po- I'm not a political political dude. You know, like yeah, yeah. I don't play politics like that, right? I'm not the. I I'm not a gatekeeper either. Right yeah. now, I can walk in the room and be like, and people won't say, "This is Anthony Olas from X." Nah, it's Anthony Olas. Like that's it. And now you have to. They'd be like, "Oh, he works with this person, that person. He knows this person, that person. He says of this, this, this." So now it's like, okay, look at his catalog. You know what I mean? Yeah. We. I, I think when people are entering into the room, people forget about personal branding. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Personal okay. branding. You know, it's just so crucial, bro. Like, you know, you're James of good vibes. You know what, and James of X, Y, and Z, like you own your own company, your your own personal brand. When people are like X of Vice or X of Genius, like yes, you can still develop your own personal brand through the company, but you're still part of. People are not giving you credit because of who you are; they're giving you because of your accolades that you're associated with. It's a yeah. different type of bargaining game. So yeah. you know anybody that's new into the game, I always tell them like, go and be the best that you can be. Right? Don't try to come in with the situation. Oh, I know what I can do. This is what I can do for you. No, just go and be yourself. That's all I've done. I've been a charismatic person. More importantly, like I just down to work. You know what I mean? Like all the bullshit. Like man, when I told you when we was talking about the LA shit, you was like, "Oh, work." I'm like, "Let's go." <laughs> like you were so surprised because you was like, "I never see somebody just like go." I'm like, "That's my energy." Like yeah. that's Nick. You too. Like, we like, yo, this was that, but it be out because whether we fail or, or win, it's a learning experience. Right. You yeah. learn from those things. You know what I mean? Like, we've learned so many things from five years, from the highest to the lows. You know, where I mean? from the, we've been up, you know, one show with $1,300 in the back to where we make only $4 out of the bag. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I had 70, we had 100 people at the show till when we only have four people at the show. Like, We've been through ups and downs. It's about continuing the path, you know? So, word. You know? Word, bro. Respect. Yeah, you're right. Cause you de- so, just to speak on that a little bit, every time um, we've held an event together, you know, I've always been like, hey, I need you to do this. And you're like, say less. So, say I, less. I always appreciate that. Whether it's working the door or slinging drinks, you're always like, yeah, say less. I got you. So, say less, bro. Cause, we, Cause that's the thing, bro. Like, you know, I'm, that's, I'm like, I'm a blue collar immigrant. You know what I mean? Like, my parents are Haitian. We just celebrated Haitian Independence Day yesterday. Oh, um, congrats, man. The three shades, you, you know, and like, you know, all I know is how to, like, my thing is more about, like, we trying to help you out. Like, shout out to Joel Stevenson. Like, right. as much as that man is the craziest dude to hang out with, I love <laughs> that craziest dude. Like, he's down to work, you know what I mean? And like, and I see, I see in you and like me, you know what I mean? Kind of that, like, that American is like, you're doing it by yourself. You, you bring in the whole stage, like you organize it, everything. Like, you need help, bro. And like, <laughs> yeah, you need help, bro. Like, and I know how it could be. Like, you'd be like, I'm everything. No, I need help. Everything. Since no one wants to help me, I need everything. I try to put my people on. 
And I'm like, nah, you don't gotta, it's like, you don't gotta be like that. Now, nah, we got you, same less. Yeah. That's the word, you know There might be some fuck ups in between. Don't get <laughs> it. I like the y'all to sleep. I might, and it might be some fuck ups, but I guarantee at the end of the night, it would be a lot easier than you just trying to do everything yourself. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, I appreciate the honesty. Respect. <laughs> no, no, it's true. I'm a, I'm a big ass fuck up. Like, no, nah, hold on, chill out, chill out. We're not gonna go like that. But you know, we're human. We're human. We're humans. We do. Yeah, yeah. We're human and we're not perfect. You ain't a fuck up, but we are human. So, so, uh, but you know, I always thought, always gotta extend the hand, even though there's human errors. I still gotta extend the hand. Word, and it's appreciated. So, just just to kind of move forward, man. You you given us a lot why music like you've given us a lot about what you do who you are and kind of how to approach it why music yeah i mean people don't realize like i started out doing sports you know what i mean like i did did sports i did sports analysis i used to do it back in like college i wanted to do it um but things didn't work out the way it was supposed to and i did music because it was a flame of like it came from an anger perspective right so okay back in college um more than an independent scene than on a major scene, like I said. So well, yeah. radio, um, I was doing radio for big press. And like, man, like I've told you, like I, I've gotten jobs from good people. Like I've gotten jobs from like Jada Kiss, uh, Mike Epps, you know, Fly. Like dog, like this is like when like, radio, you know, not radio was, yeah, yeah. Like, radio was on the come up. Like they East, I've gotten jobs of those people. But I also found out that there were new trends that were happening in the music industry. Like, so radio is not becoming now more visual component. You know, you need to have like more important guests in the room with a good personnel. Like you need all that. And basically I saw basically a lot of politicking that happened in radio. And that's only just from like, a, you know, FM, whatever FM perspective, where like I lost uh, some of my drops got like taken from me. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. this crazy shit. Like people took away opportunities for me just to gain one up on me. Um, just because it put them in a better position and yeah. politics, like, you know, who's friends with this person to get them a better opportunity. My love for the independency came from like, I don't have, any, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it came from scarcity. So I used to have artists come in and be like, yo, for free, we used to do Freestyle Friday, which I sampled from 106, 106 in part. Yeah. Used to be an artist come out. You know, we do a freestyle of a beat or maybe an acoustic, whatever. We used to go crazy in the studio. I and this was before Drake Champs became Drake Champs. Like, I used to have drinks in the studio. <laughs> oh, y'all were kicking it. We're sticking, we're sticking, you know what I mean? Um, and, um, you know, people just lack the knowledge, right? And people would get constantly, like, you know, manipulated. It's like deals or situations. But also people didn't have principles to stand on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, as I, you know, partnered up with uh, UMG back in the days, did a couple of brand ambassador things with the you know, campus college rep, um, yeah. college reps, and then working at Sony ATV Publishing, you know, I just seen a lot of slickness, bro. Like, like, you don't realize that I've seen the big major side of things and I chose this lane. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and I, yeah. I chose this lane because it's like, it's not me. Um, so music was like, I don't want to say it all back, it, but it was because it was like, I've always wanted to help creatives like pursue their creatives full time, like creativity full time. Yeah. Right. It just music was like kind of like the default of everything. And then I've been doing it for five years. I'm like, shit, like I'm killing it. I'm killing it on the blogs. You might as well. Artists are like you, you might as well. And now I'm like, it's I'm celebrating five years in like literally eleven days. You know what I mean? So yeah. um it's it's tough, but you know, we here. We here. That's yeah. right, my brother. We yeah, we here. So, with that understanding, your why, what's been your favorite part about it all? I think the growth, man. I mean, the growth has been fun, man. Like when you have an artist that you can, when you generally work with, and like you go through the trials and tribulations, it's like dating. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. Like before, like it's so funny. Like before we was at like. Before the, the the subway freestyle zone that you see that we do, like, they went crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, like so, it was me, A A Q, and then um Jerry, and they was asking like, what? So what? What is Nick and I? And me and Nick couldn't really figure out our relationship. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. I couldn't really, like tell him like, 
oh, I'm this artist, he's my manager, because that's not how we roll. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because yeah. I've actually adopted the same model that you said, like we're partners, in front, you know what I mean? That, I think that's the better way of going as a manager rather than like, I'm a manager, you're an artist, it's I say, you do. Like, I don't, that's weird for me, right? Yeah. But partnership, right? Like the growth. And I've seen Nick do shows where it's only four people, you know what I mean? I've yeah. seen Nick do like a show where he brings out, so, like, I still have it to this day, like the Delancey show in 2019 in November, was one of the wildest shows that I've ever been to. Like, it was wild. Like, he solely brought out like 75, 80 people by himself. He did the box by himself. Like, like, and it's just, it's it's always a pleasure to see your artists grow. You know what I mean? From yeah, are like it's always a pleasure to see them grow because because you see where they were at before. Now you see them like grown into like their own creativity, their own artistry. And that's what I love about this game. That's why I had them at like. As much as I've always said I want to leave, I just want to dip. I think seeing the growth of artists that you work with over time, it's the beauty. And if you don't love it, then I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. No, and I, I would agree. I think because I got my moments where I'm like down, but then it's like, man, I fucking love it. Like, like now that I'm I, I'm down right now, but I know I'm going to be back up and I know I'm going to be like, like, yeah, I really did this. Like, I can't believe. I made it this far. I did. I've done all this stuff. Like even like after last year, it's like I look back and I'm like, man, I could have went harder. But then it was like, bro, I I did some shit. Like I look at all the experience. Like look at where I'm at today. Like so, yeah, I, I feel that. And then just to speak on the partnerships a little bit more, I chose that because I was always so curious to to be on the management side. Because originally, like Good Vibes started out, you know, I was the talent buying, but I also Sorry. but I also wanted to like be a booking agent. Like I was like, oh, I want to book shows. Right. And, you know, and I was and I was doing that. OK, I was shaking the right hands to get my people on stages, Um, you know, with Davies, Montana 300, uh, Dizzy Wright, Chris Webby. Echo, like I've, I've shaken those hands and, and I've got people in places to where they performed in like St. Louis or um, like right. perform. So that that's but the partnership aspect is just like we're both building our own things right now. So I cannot give you 100 percent. Right. If you ever need anything, I got you. You need help with I got you. content ideas. I'm your man. Like, you know, I'll answer the phone for you. Everybody else has to pay. I'll answer the phone for you because yeah. we worked out this deal to where we're partners. Where well, we're partners, right? You know what I mean? Like, I love the partnership because it's just like, I can't, I can't manage some, I can't manage people because I'm still managing myself. Myself, bro. Yeah. I'm managing myself. Man. You know? Yeah. And so uh, right now I'm focusing on building my personal like you spoke of earlier, your personal brand and your business brand. Like, right. and I've I've been so focused on the good vibes thing that people don't really know who it is behind it. So I'm focused on the the personal brand as well. Right. And you know, I just did a book segment, and it was like, what kind of manager are you? And I was like, I'm the motherfucker that I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yeah. I I shook the right hands yet. I I'm not in the, those rooms yet. I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere, but you know what? I'll figure it out. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much what it's been. You know, we, and bro, we went to LA. Bro. We, we went that. to Alabama, like, it turned out, bro. It turned out. What the fuck? So it was, so it was like, we're free. So yeah, that, that's why the partnership aspect is like super important to me. And I emphasize it. And right now, like I work off percentages because I, I don't think, um, I'm in the position to just charge them quarterly yet until I can right. prove that, you know, I can get them on blogs. I can get them interviews. I can, right. I've proven I can get them shows. You know what I'm saying? That, right. not that it's easy, but I've proven that I can shake the right hands. I can put you in certain places if that's where you want to be. But now I need to prove on the other aspect that, um, I can get you on blogs. I can get you write-ups. I can build your following. Cause you know, the Facebook ads, YouTube ads that I got that shit down too. So, um, All right. So yeah, that's that. That's why the part I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on the partnership, the partnership that I that I run, um, because it it's a lot model, yeah model, yeah. And I it's not something that I had seen, but I just knew for a fact, like it, like they do call me their manager, and you know they do refer business to me. But I always always remind them like like I'm your partner, like I'm handling all your business, but I'm also teaching you. Like I want you to know right. that because I I tell I tell them before we start, I was like I'm a stepping stone. You know, I have, I have a, I'm a father. I'm a stepping stone. I want to be able to get you to the next place and get you in the hands of someone who can really 
help you take your career to the next level. Yeah. You know, and a lot of them are like, nah, I'm rocking with you, but I'm like, I know there's going to be a limit for me, you know what I'm saying? Because I have a daughter. So at the end of the day, I got to go to this nine to five. I can't risk it like Mm -hmm. everybody else. So, but yeah, so that, that's why the partnership is formed. So, and I did see you tweet about adapting that and I, you know, I, and I respect that because man, we still got our own shit to build because it's like, okay, now Anthony Obos is in these rooms. Now, when I say my manager is Anthony Obos, it means more than, oh, that's my manager. It means a little more. Like you said, your weight, your name has weight now. So it, we, it holds weight and you can't let anybody just walk around and be like, yo, James is my manager. Like you really got to be like, oh, I never, you never said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people be saying like, yo, Anthony Obus recommended me. I'm like, well, Tom. <laughs> okay. yeah um so it's like that's my shit you know what i mean like i always tell people like yo i just hold with my name needs weight so yeah yeah I, yeah i had i've had to make a few announcements like yo if i haven't like personally talked to you like i guarantee like they're just name dropping yeah that's because if i ever send anyone to you you would know yeah exactly and it had a yeah, I'm not in, in the blind. Uh, so just to, just to get back to the interview because this is about you, but I did want to get the partnership program a little more. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with your with your choice to choose music, like does does music? Do you have a does your family have a background in music, or it was just something that you were just like shifted to? Oh my my dad is my dad is a musician. Like my dad is uh he's always been in to jazz. He was uh he was a lead. Oh, this is like a bait like a bait not a bass a drummer. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Haitian bank or Dolby Ghana, uh, where back in the day. So they in like a very tradition. They always recycle like band. You know how bands are, like yeah. <laughs> uh, you know how it is. Yeah. So he was there. He also played soccer, um, as well too. And he always had rhythm. But like music, again, like music. Even though I ran in a family, it never really influenced me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I found my own musical journey myself. You know what I mean? Like I started out listening to like my first album that I bought was Nazomatic. Um, yeah, I bought that on CD. Then I went into Amy Winehouse, um, Back to Black. Um, then I had Arthur's Confessions, right? So again, like I was juggling trying to find my own space in music. So, you know, I still got to actually here, to be honest with you. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. So, uh, on your journey in the, in the five years that you've been in the music industry, celebrate your anniversary in 11 days. Uh, what are a few lessons that you've had to learn and what tips would you give to other artists um, that, or <laughs> let me, let me rephrase, not others, artists, but other people that want to be in the industry? Yeah. I mean, in my five years I've learned, and I mean, I went through last week was like a very like dark place for me, I think, because in a sense, not like a dark, but like it's a, it's a new blog I came out basically like, I'm always a light person. Like I'm always yeah. able to help everybody. I'm always positive, but the situation is you put out so much energy into the industry. How much is the industry giving back to you? You know what I'm saying? So my first three years, I, I suffered like my first three years, I suffered from burnout massive. You know what I mean? Like going to so much shows, working with so many artists, like it was a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I never had time. And again, last week I was thinking about it. Like, as I revamped my website, I was like, what was all of that for? You know what I'm saying? Was that for the artist? Was that for me? Was that just for the experience? And what was the purpose of all that, right? Yeah. I think when we're moving into the industry, you have to focus on channeling your work for you to leverage your work. And then you can work on getting other people in the door, right? I think it's because you are the, and I don't want to say, not, no, there's no discredit to the artist, right? Or anybody else. But it's you that makes the artist better. It's you that make the business better, right? It's not you giving out things that you don't know into a, a, an industry that's already thing. You have to focus on you. So during like, you know, my five, my three years, it was a lot of learning, but it was also a lot of being outside, going to the event, yeah. doing all this, trying to connect with people. And it was more like, I wasn't connecting with people. It was more, what's your IG? Oh, this is my IG, follow, let's follow, let's follow. And it's just like, did we yeah. really connect? Yeah. Did we really find a true meaning for us to intersect creatively? And if we did, did those moments really last a long time? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like there are so much stories I have about Nick, Jar, you know what I mean? Like, uh, my boys, it's just like, and also like my family, it's like, 
I have so much stories that I could tell people. And to this day, we still laugh. You know what I mean? Like, I still laugh at the story when I'm in London and we got locked out of, you know, my home girl Selena's house. And I'm like, Nick, I can't survive. I'm from the hood. And, I just, <laughs> and, and like, I we're in the middle of London, like East Broden. And I'm like, yo, I'm hella lit. And I'm like, bro, we can't sleep. We got to buy something. I'm dying. And it's just like those memories, like, even though like I was like obliterated, like I was just like, yeah, you know, like those are the moments that I cherish because we did it together. But I also put me first. You know, I put me first. I did at a time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So again, if anybody that's in the industry, I always say, put you, and it sounds selfish to say, put yourself first, but also figure out what the fuck are you trying to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because you don't want to waste your time. Like, I felt like these five years, even though I've gotten like huge success, there were certain things that I wish I didn't go to because it was just a waste of time. You know, yeah. these days I don't even go to certain people's events. People send me a lot of events. I don't go to them because it's a waste of time. Like, yeah. it, it, not, really? all right, all right, all right. So just to rephrase that, just like, not that it's a waste of time. There's just no benefit at this time. There's no benefit at this time. But it's also the fact that it doesn't align with what I'm trying to achieve. So yeah. it's like me going there is for what? Like, what am I going there to do? Right? Like, yeah. for example, like, you know, like, like Major Stage is a big platform here in New York City. They do a lot of bookings every Tuesdays, every Wednesdays, right? Yeah. What do I look like? What do I look like as Anthony Obas when we're to a Major Stage show that's $30 a ticket to see only one performer? And you're and you're not getting a single dime out of that thirty dollars. Yeah, I'm past that. I used to do that. Yeah, but not any. But I used to stay for the whole show because I was so I wanted to network with artists. But yeah. now these days, I know too many artists in New York. I can step in a room and know at least five. Hey, hey, man, love you, love you. I gotta love you, love you bad hey, enough. Talk shit, talk that shit. boy, oh boss, we walk. I don't know where the fuck we's at, bro. I had to get my dragon free, right? We're walking. I see this dude. He's flying. I'm like, bro, I fuck where you're fit today. Oh boss goes, don't I know you? And he was like, oh boss. Did you say he's like, oh boss? And you're like, yo, you were at this one show. And he was like, yo, yeah. And bro, we're in New York. We're just walking down the street, and this artist is like, Obos? Like, that shit was correct. That's, I was like, that, that boy, Obos, out here. We're walk. I, I have no idea where we were, but bro, we, it was busy. It was busy. We were in the middle of Chinatown, bro. And it was like, <laughs> Rocky, because he did a show with Nick. He did a show with Nick, and he was like, he was like the maybe like, one, if Nick was the headliner, he was probably like the, the, the middle guy. So it's like, maybe okay, third. Okay. So I was like, yo, I've been seeing you go crazy. Like, me and him stay connected because me and him smoked. We smoked that night. We ended yeah. up chilling to the studio literally a couple of like, weeks yeah. after. Yeah. We get it. Because we, and that's the type of shit I'm on now because it was like, it's connections, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I just wanted to, uh, you're like, I'm in these, and I'm like, no, bro, you, you was outside and it was like, oh, boss. Yeah. He was outside in New York and artist was like, oh, boss. Like, so that's why I was like, yeah, this is, boy, oh, boss. Real deal. We be out here. We be out here. Yeah. You know? So it's like, and again, it's not the idea of wasting time, but it's about like, it has to make sense. You know? Yeah. It has to make sense from a financial perspective. It has to make sense from, you know, a, a, a mental health, I think. And it has to make sense from timing because it's just like, you know, a lot of us have bills to pay. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> we got oh, God. It. oh, God. Like, you have all kids. Like, you cannot be doing yeah. these things and like, Go to, you know, drive three hours to Chicago to a show that's not for me, Curie. Like, again, it has to make sense. Yeah. 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 Well, I appreciate you sitting down and kind of kicking game to everybody, man. I, I know this bitch going to get a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to yeah, be man. You're the only. But where can people follow you, support you, and just tap in and stay tuned with what you got going on? Listen, man, Anthony Obas, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, O-B-A-S, every platform. It's very simple. Listen. Word. Once you look up Anthony Opus, you'll get it everywhere. On God, you will. And you'll even see him tagged on my page and stuff like that. And I'll even include the links in the description. Oh, boss, my brother. Thank you for kicking it with me, man. I appreciate you. James, I love you. I'll see you what, in Miami. <laughs> All right, my brother. I'll talk to you later. One love, brother. Peace. Peace.